Greetings. My name is Kevin Reddick, and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Our conversation uh, in the Hot Box today was really a carryover of the conversations and reporting of the various news cycles and news channels regarding former President Donald Trump's comments during his appearance at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention in July the 31st in Chicago. So let's jump in the car and let's ride. According to the organization's president, Ken Lemon, the interview was delayed for about one hour as the Trump team argued against fact-checking on the spot. While the former president refused to go on stage until it was agreed upon that there would be no uh, instant fact-checking, so to speak. Then upon taking the stage, the former president began to falsely assert that Vice President Harris was, quote, Indian all the way and suddenly became a black person, unquote. His complete statement was, uh, I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know if she is Indian or she is black, unquote. I believe the word he was looking for is biracial. According to the 2020 U.S. Census, 33.8 million people or 10.2% of the U.S. population identified as multiracial, which is up from 9 million in 2010. This makes multiracial people the fastest growing demographic in America. An Afrometrics poll on self-identification conducting in February 2013 highlights how many African Americans or Black people identify racial identity in multidimensional ways that transcend dictionary definitions and common scientific definitions of race. Black people were surveyed about how they define what it means to be African-American slash Black. The African-American slash Black respondents were particip that who participated in the study most frequently mentioned six aspects of what it means to be Black in America. First was struggle and resilience. Second was ancestry. Third was pride. Fourth was history and legacy. And fifth was African descent. And sixth was physicality. So for the sake of time, I'll just briefly highlight the top three. The most common aspect of what it means to be black mentioned in the study was struggle and resilience. 25% of the participants in this study identified being black with being a part of a struggle for justice and equality against the forces of racism and other forms of oppression. This finding supports the idea that black people draw their racial identity to assist them in their efforts to accomplish goals, be creative, and remain confident in the face of adversity. So to this, I say Vice President Harris, check. Number two, 23% of respondents mentioned their ancestors as a significant part of what it means to be black. Being black is to possess black blood, whether it be full or partial, and or be a descendant of black ancestors. Therefore, this finding suggests that not only are ancestors honored in what it means to be black, but also that many see a continuous responsibility to honor them by acknowledging them as being part of oneself. So to Vice President Harris, again, check. Number three, 23% of the participants in this study identified being black with pride. They defined their racial identity as a source of personal and collective pride and empowerment. Black people may utilize their racial identity as a source of pride. Moreover, institutions, organizations, and individuals who are interested in promoting a healthy self-concept and sense of self-worth 
among black people may do so by promoting a positive sense of racial identity among them, such as historically black colleges, HBUs, and black fraternities and sororities. So again, to Vice President Harris, check. Vice President Kamala Harris is a biracial American. How she decides to identify herself is completely her choice. But I guess some people want to take that choice away from her as well, along with what a woman can do with her body. Let's move on. If the former uh, president took some time to, to read one of the Bibles he's selling, he might learn something from the Apostle Paul and his spiritual son, Timothy. Paul was actually born Saul. He was of Benjamin uh, lineage and Hebrew ancestry, according to Philippians chapter three. His parents were Pharisees. Pharisees were fervent Jewish nationalists who adhered strictly to the law of Moses. And anything Greek would have been despised in Saul's household. Saul was enraged against the Christians. He had asked the high priest for letters to the synagogues in, synagogues in Damascus for asking permission to bring any Christians who were known as followers of the way back to Jerusalem to imprison them. On his journey, he had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus asked, uh, and I quote, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul answered, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Now in the process of all of this, Paul was struck with blindness. When his sight was restored to him, Paul soon became one of the leading proclaimers of Jesus Christ. And because of Paul's ministry, he was arrested several times. One time while arrested, and placed in a Roman jail, Paul was being beaten. He finally informed his jailers that he was a Roman citizen and invoked his rights as such. In fact, the apostle Paul claimed to be a citizen of both Taurus, Acts uh, 21, and Rome, seen in Acts 22. Thus, upon uh, Paul, upon mention of his Roman citizenship, received an apology from magistrate at Philippi for having been imprisoned without a trial, according to Acts 16. He also avoided a beating in Jerusalem, recorded in Acts 22, and he was able to request a trial before Caesar. Paul was born a Roman citizen and a prominent wealthy family in Taurus. Roman citizens commonly had two names, one which indicated their background or heritage apart from Rome, and the other which would be their Roman heritage. And Paul also bore two names, the Hebrew name Saul, meaning desire or acts for, and the Roman Paulius, meaning small. So in that light, Paul had two heritages. Paul did not go around claiming his Roman citizenship openly, but when he needed to, he did. And this was the culture in which Paul lived that allowed him to do so. Standing on one did not deny him the right or the privilege to stand on the other. Paul's situation was not a biracial one, but a biheritage one. God established and ordained Paul's background because he knew what Paul would face in the commission of his ministry and fulfilling his purpose and his destiny. In other words, Paul would need to be able to legally declare his status as a Jew and as a Roman citizen. As Bible-believing Christians, we are okay with Paul's dual heret heritage, correct? So I ask, what's the problem with Vice President Harris standing and proclaiming her biracial status as she sees fit? The Apostle Paul did so with his. Let's look at Timothy. Timothy is a prominent figure in the early church and 
Paul's ministries as well as Paul's letters. First and second Timothy are written to him from Paul. He appears repeatedly throughout Acts and is mentioned as a co-sender along with Paul of uh, 2 Corinthians, Philippians, Colossians, of uh, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, and Philip. Paul describes Timothy as, quote, my son whom I love and who is faithful in the Lord. When Timothy first appears in the New Testament, this statement is made about him. In Acts 16, uh, verse 1, it states, Paul came to Derba and then to Lystra, where, he, where, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. Apparently, Timothy was of mixed heritage, his mother being Jewish and his father Greek. This young mixed disciple was used by God to have a huge impact for the gospel of Jesus Christ, both in the first century and, continue, and continuing on through scripture to this day. In one of the letters that Timothy is listing in as a co-sender, we find this statement. There is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. That's in Colossians 3 and 11. So I have presented to you Kamala Harris, Apostle Paul, and Brother Timothy, all with dual nationalities and identities. Paul being Jewish and a Roman citizen, Timothy being Jewish and Greek, Vice President Harris being Black and Indian. How or when they choose to identify themselves as such does not negate the one from the other. And that really should be the end of the conversation. And it is going to be the end of ours at this point. So I hope you enjoyed the ride today. Thank you for spending some of your time with me. Please take a second to like this post, share it with family and friends, subscribe to this channel. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.